Now what we're going to do is interpret sine, cosine and tan in a slightly different way involving right triangles, so triangles with a right angle in them. So forgive me, um, I know that you all used to call in these right triangles. Uh, because I'm British, we often call them right angle triangles, so I hope there's no confusion. So let's recall the definition of sine, cos and tan, shall we? So let's recall. So I'm going to do this purely for an angle which is strictly between 0 and pi over 2. I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it in this instance, and you're going to see why in a second. So let's take this. So what does this mean? Well, this is going to be my angle. This is going to be how I'm going to wind around my unit circle. So let's draw a unit circle, as always, centered at centered at the origin okay so this is my unit circle centered at the origin so this is kind of your x this is your y one minus one one minus one okay so i'm choosing theta to be between zero and pi over two so this is kind of often how i've drawn this picture so that means it's between zero and pi over two so zero and 90 degrees if you want to think in degrees but you really shouldn't um so yeah so this is the position you get so first of all what do i have so this point at the top by definition this point is cos of theta sine of theta that's the meaning of cos theta and sine theta remember it's the x and y coordinates of this position so what I'm going to do now is kind of interesting. I'm going to observe that I can build a right angle triangle from this. So a right triangle. So let me drop down. Let me drop down a straight line here and build a right angle triangle. So I've got a little angle there, right? So an angle of 90 degrees or pi over 2 at that point. So let's say a few things about this. This right triangle, I know what the lengths of the edges are. By definition, the length of the bottom is cos of theta. Right, that's the x-coordinate. By definition, the height is sine of theta. That's the y-coordinate. And the length of this other side, well, it's the unit circle, so it's just equal to 1. Okay, so let's just summarize what we've got here. So in this instance, right, if I have theta between these two, I'm getting this nice triangle. So for, for theta in this in this range, we have the right triangle the right angle triangle given by or what is it? Let me just kind of just draw another version of it just to make it bigger for us. So we've got this guy here. So something along these lines. So we've got this one sine of theta cos of theta. Now let's just remember some basic names of things. The angle, I should mark this in, shouldn't I? I didn't do it. This angle is theta. So that's too small, isn't it? So this angle in here is theta. So down here, same thing. Okay, so just remind ourselves a little bit, if that's my angle, um, and I'm talking about the edges, I give them all names. So this one, of course, is called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. These are all Greek. Certainly hypotenuse is. Um, this is not, though. This is the opposite, for obvious reasons. The opposite edge. And this is, of course, the adjacent edge, because it's adjacent, it's beside theta. So these are just names associated with this right angle triangle with internal angle theta. Now, I want to make an observation about similar triangles. So I said something along these lines when I was talking about radians. When I was defining radians to begin with, 
And we talked about if I have two, two segments of a circle which are similar, so have the same internal angles, it doesn't matter what their sizes are, the ratio of the arc length around the outside to the radius is always the same. So the same thing basically holds for any triangle. So that's not a triangle, it's a segment, but it's the same basic deal. So if I have some triangle like this, and I take another triangle, which is not identical necessary, but it's similar. All right, so let's just make it smaller. And let's label the edges. So let's call this one A, let's call this one B, and let's call this one capital C. And for this smaller guy, let's call it little a, little b, and little c. And hopefully the distinction will be obvious. So these are what? They're similar triangles, which means they've got the same internal angles. Similar triangles. So the same, same internal angles. So what do I know? Well, just like we had for these similar segments, if I take corresponding sides and take ratios, they don't change. So for example, the length capital A and little a may be very different than each other. Little a is smaller, of course, but if I take A divided by B and I take little a divided by little b, they're equal to each other. Same thing with all of the possibilities. A divided by C, is equal to little a divided by little c, and I don't know, b divided by c. Big C is equal to little b divided by little c. So the ratios are the same for similar angles, once you've paired up appropriately. So the ratios are equal. Ratios are equal for similar triangles, once you've kind of matched everything up appropriately. So it's a kind of a really nice geometric fact. Now why am I telling us this? So this gives actually a really nice way to interpret sine, cosine and tangent if I'm dealing with an angle which is between 0 and pi over 2. So here's an important consequence of this. important consequence. And I'm going to call this by its kind of acronym. So car toa, soccer toa, something you may well have heard before. So what is this? So given any right triangle, given any right triangle with an internal angle theta. Like this, okay? So imagine this is your theta. And let's label the sides as always. Let's have this as A for adjacent O for opposite and H for hypotenuse. Then the following is true, and I'll show you why in a second. Cosine of theta has to be equal to the adjacent length divided by the hypotenuse. In fact, now let's do let's do sine first because it's so katoa. So sine of theta has to be equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. That's so car cosine of theta has to be equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Toa tan of theta has to be equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. Now you may ask yourself why is this the case? So let me just illustrate why it's true. So it's all to do with this similar triangle business. So let's just go up here a second and observe that this triangle is similar to this triangle. So let me just take this down. So this triangle I got up here from the unit circle, 
these two guys are they're similar aren't they and if they're similar that means the ratios of all the sides are the same so if the ratios of the sides are the same what would the opposite divided by the hypotenuse be well the opposite would be sine theta the hypotenuse is 1 so this is sine theta divided by 1 from that blue triangle so maybe I should do it in blue just to show you that it's coming from this triangle what about the other guy well now adjacent divided by hypotenuse it's going to be the same for both because they're similar that's cosine divided by 1 that's cosine so this is cosine theta divided by 1 remember the adjacent's not equal that is not necessarily equal to that no 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 but the ratios are the same similarly this well opposite divided by adjacent is that which by definition is tan very nice so given a right triangle we can interpret cosine sine and tan of the internal angle theta as these ratios now something important to understand here is and this i would imagine is how many of you have seen sine cosine and tan i would guess this is how you saw it first which makes sense because it's kind of a simple idea in terms of very basic geometry but this is an extremely restrictive approach to sine, cos, and tan. The reason being, it only really makes sense if theta is between 0 and pi over 2. Because if theta is not between 0 and pi over 2, you don't have a right triangle. Not in a reasonable sense. For example, what about if theta was equal to pi? I mean, that would be 180 degrees. You don't have a right triangle there. So it's really important to understand this only makes sense for theta between I mean you can come up with some kind of interpretation but it's all a bit of a mess so warning this only makes sense makes sense for theta in the appropriate ranges so theta if it's going to be an internal angle to a right triangle has to be strictly between pi over 2 and greater than 0. Now the entire reason I didn't lead with this definition is because we're thinking about sine, cos and tan as functions. Now as functions we know they make sense for absolutely any value of theta and we know what they mean right? Cosine is the x-coordinate of a position on the unit circle sine is the y-coordinate of a position on the unit circle and I suppose tan could be thought of as the slope of this line here that's the proper meaning all right and that's how you should think about them always but if we restrict theta to be between 0 and pi over 2 then yes there's this pretty neat interpretation in terms of right triangles but it's it's secondary to the definition involving the unit circle right, I cannot stress that enough when you think of sine, cos, and tan, this should not be the first thing that comes to your mind. The first thing that should come to your mind should be the unit circle approach, because that is the true meaning of sine, cos, and tan. So, very important now. This is going to be super useful to me, but should I just say, yeah, I might as well just say what I've just said, write it down. I mean, the thing is, cos of theta sine theta and tan theta they make sense for any theta for all numbers theta even though most don't have a corresponding right triangle in general maybe I will say something about this if for example theta was theta was 
let's say between pi over 2 and pi. So you could draw the position over here. You could draw a right triangle there, but the lengths wouldn't be what you think they are, right? It would all be kind of backwards and wrong. The height would still be sine, but the length on the bottom wouldn't be cos of theta, it would be minus cos of theta. So you run into all sorts of sine problems if you try to do this. So it's not something you should even touch, really, when it comes down to it. Not to mention the internal angle would be wrong. It wouldn't be the internal angle to the... So if I drew this, let me just get this right. If I drew this, the theta wouldn't be that, right? The theta would be the angle around there. So the whole thing is a complete nightmare. You don't want to touch it with a barge pole. So front and center, the unit circle approach. If you're between 0 and pi over 2, then yes, there's this lovely interpretation in terms of right angle triangles. Now, there are nice consequences of this, which are very visible in this restricted case, which are actually true in general. So if we take Pythagoras' theorem, Pythagoras' theorem applied to the right triangle up here, So this is going to give me a way to kind of come up with really clever identities involving my trigonometric functions. Well, what's Pythagoras' theorem? Pythagoras' theorem is the statement that if I have a right triangle, the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. It's one of your fundamental geometric results about right triangles. So in this case, if we write it down, what do we get? Well, we would get cos squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. So that's the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared is the hypotenuse squared. That's 1 squared. That's equal to 1. So this is a fundamental relationship between sine and cosine, which is not really obvious until you take this right angle approach. Right? It's not totally obvious that's the case um, until you're thinking about things in terms of right triangles. Now, a few words about notation here that can be confusing. This guy, what this means is this is kind of shorthand notation for cos of theta all squared. Same thing here. So this is just standard shorthand notation for it. This is sine of theta. Oh my goodness. All squared. And the thing to understand here as well is the Pythagoras' theorem can only really be applied, of course, if the angle is between 0 and pi over 2. But because sine and cos are actually odd and even functions, it turns out to work for absolutely everything. So this is a really nice fact. So fact, and I'm not going to justify it. I could leave that to you, perhaps. This works for all theta. For all theta. Just everything. So it, it's we've justified it using kind of the right triangle approach, which means we're kind of restricting to this, but actually it works for everything. So it's really, really nice. So this is an incredibly important identity. It's probably the single most important trigonometric identity that we use in basic calculus. Um, and when I say trigonometric identity, what I mean by that is a formula an algebraic formula involving your trigonometric functions. So let's do some consequences of this, or useful variants, should I say. So these turn up at various stages when we're doing calculus. Useful variants. So there's two I want to talk about. So let's take this guy. So I've got cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. This is basically Pythagoras in disguise. Let's do something that's kind of silly. Let's divide everything, both sides, by cos squared. So then by my laws of algebra, I would have this splitting like this. So this would be plus sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta would be equal to 1 divided by, so the same thing that's both sides. So what would that imply? So let me just reiterate, I'm dividing both sides by the same thing. It's not obvious why I'm doing this just yet. 
divide both sides by cos squared theta. So what do I get? Well, cos squared over cos squared, of course, is just 1. Sine over cos, remember, is tan. And if I square a fraction, it's the square of the numerator divided by the square of the denominator. So this is going to become what? This is going to become tan squared, using the obvious notation. And then what have I got? Well, 1 over a squared is 1 over a all squared. So this becomes 1 over cos squared. But if you remember, cos 1 over cos has another name. It's secant. So secant theta squared. So this is another useful variant of this exact same formula, basically. We're not doing anything too profound. So again, let's just make sure we understand. This is just notation. Secant theta, written as sec theta, is by definition 1 over cos theta. It's not a very important function, really. Um, not as important, should I say, as sine and cosine. So we could also do this by dividing through by sine squared. So if I do the same thing, but with a sine squared, what happens? So cos squared theta divided by sine squared theta plus sine squared theta divided by cos, or the same thing, sine squared theta, would be equal to 1 over sine squared theta. And now simplifying this guy. So this would be cos over sine all squared. Cos over sine is cotangent. Sine squared over sine squared is plus 1. 1 over sine is cosecant. Um, so squared, so it's going to be cosecant squared theta. These don't turn up terribly often. The first one, from my experience teaching calculus, is much more important than the second. But they do show up sometimes. So again, just to remind us, cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent, but that's cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. And cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. So let's just refresh what we've done quickly. If I have an angle which is between 0 and pi over 2, then I can Think about cosine and sine as being the top corner of a right triangle, sitting, sitting in the first quadrant of the xy plane. Now, by thinking carefully about similar triangles, I know that if I take any triangle, a right triangle, so maybe I should have done that before, a right triangle with internal angle theta, if I label the edges appropriately, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, I know that has to be similar to this triangle that came from the unit circle. That means, because of the equality between ratios of appropriately chosen sides in similar triangles, that I can interpret sine as the opposite length divided by the hypotenuse length, the cosine as the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent as the opposite divided by the adjacent. I suppose as well now I could interpret things like secant cosecant and cotangent in this way and it would just be the ratios flipped up so for example secant of theta would now be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent right because it's one over cos theta but again not so important now this interpretation generally speaking is the first one people learn it's very geometric obviously because it's related to right triangles but it's not good for our purposes because it's far too basic because it only makes sense for theta between zero and pi over two we need to understand sine, cosine, and theta for all theta. Okay, at least sine and cosine, tangent, you run into some problems dividing by zero. But we need to understand sine and cos for everything. And that's why we've completely ignored this until now. The actual meaning of sine and cos is this unit circle position business. And this is just a byproduct of all of that. So this is secondary to the unit circle. Right? The unit circle is, is the definition of cosine and sine. It is, it is a secondary fact, really, that this... Is what we get out. Historically, I would imagine this um, came first, right, this Sokotoa business. But from a more um, sophisticated perspective, thinking about things as functions, the unit circle is far superior.
And the beauty of this is we can get some relationships now using our knowledge of geometry. So the right triangle we drew down before, applying Pythagoras to it, gives us this nice formula, cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. We can have some small variations on it. They're not too profound. The main one is cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So next time we'll look at some other pretty important um, identities involving trigonometric functions.